Welcome to Wonderland, the podcast where I go down the rabbit hole to research things you may be curious about. My name is Ami, and I'll be your guide on this trip to Wonderland. Hi there, my Wonderlings, and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's episode is going to be short and sweet, but I thought it was an interesting topic in light of a strange story that was in the news in February. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. So what topic are we wondering about this week? Parenthogenesis. Parthenogenesis. 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 Did I pronounce that correctly? Parthenogenesis. 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 That's a big, very scientific sounding word. Why is this particular topic on my mind this week? Well, you may have heard about Charlotte, the round stingray at an aquarium in Hendersonville, North Carolina, who was recently found to be pregnant with no male stingrays around. Maybe you've heard about this story this week. A stingray named Charlotte at the Aquarium and Shark Lab in Hendersonville is pregnant and no one knows how. There are no male stingrays in her habitat. Scientists believe this could have happened one of two ways, both of which are certainly scientifically unusual. First, it is possible that she was impregnated by one of the two male white spotted bamboo sharks that she shared a tank with, but that would mean cross-species breeding. The other option is that Charlotte reproduced parthenogenetically. So what does parthenogenetic mean? Uh, the beginning of a partheno? Which is? I have no idea. Uh-huh. Genesis. The future. Um, it is a, uh, obviously a terrible disease that no one would ever want to <laughs> contract or be around anyone who has it. Really. I know Genesis means beginning, but I don't know what Partho means. I know Genesis means beginning. Partheno. Man, I can't. I don't I don't know what Partheno. I'm trying to figure out like if I know another word that has that beginning. Parthenogenesis is a means of reproducing asexually or without a male and female pair. The word parthenogenesis is broken down into two Greek words. Partheno, meaning virgin, and genesis which means creation or beginning or origin, like Caroline and Cheyenne guessed. According to National Geographic's Corin Wetzel, parthenogenesis is a rare form of asexual reproduction in which a female produces an embryo without fertilization by a male sperm. Instead, a smaller cell body, known as a polar body, which forms at the same time as the egg and contains DNA, similar to the mother's, merges with the fertile egg. This creates offspring that are similar to the mother, but not exact clones. Wild, right? While reproduction by parthenogenesis is unusual, and to note, unheard of in Charlotte's species, it is the only means by which some species reproduce. There is a lizard species called the whiptail lizard in the desert grassland of the United States and Mexico that is entirely female, not a male in the whole species. It is believed that this species was created when a male of one species of lizard mated with a female of another species. This cross-species mating should have resulted in sterile offspring, making it impossible for the new hybrid species to reproduce. But it didn't. Instead, the females reproduced asexually by doubling their own chromosomal count instead of relying on sperm to bring half of the required DNA to create life. This is a type of cloning. While this whiptail lizard is an interesting novelty of parthenogenesis, they are not the only living organism to reproduce this way. We're not going to get into lower plants or invertebrates here because asexual reproduction is not uncommon there, but for vertebrates, it's much more rare. The whiptail lizards aren't the only vertebrate who can reproduce without a partner. They're joined by more than 80 other sexual vertebrate species, though typically these other species reproduce both sexually and parthenogenetically. I don't know why this popped in my head, but I want to, I don't know why I want to say a single cell protozoa, but that's wrong. I don't know, some single cell organism, maybe? Frog. Plants? Frogs, right? Um, I think, uh, some worms. Um, there are some species of frogs that can. Um, I guess in the news lately, we've found out that there's a potential that a, a particular type of shark. Um, apparently stingrays, because Charlotte 
uh, did not get pregnant by a shark, but she reproduces asexually. Komodo dragons, some wild turkeys, some pythons, and some sharks have all been documented for reproducing asexually, both in captivity and in the wild. So why would creatures who can reproduce sexually sometimes reproduce parthenogenetically? According to TED-Ed, mating and its associated demands and rituals can be both time and energy intensive. This leaves the mating pair vulnerable to predators and sometimes can be fatal. Take the mayfly, for example. Those annoying bugs that swarm me at the lake only live for 24 to 48 hours, which means in less than two days, they have to find a partner, mate, and lay eggs for the next generation to be born. They're on the clock, and if no males are around, mayflies resort to parthenogenesis to ensure their population continues to thrive. This is also seen in pea aphids, who reproduce by parthenogenesis during the summer when they have favorable living conditions to boost their population. But then in the autumn, these insects switch back to reproducing by mating between a male and a female. Since most creatures don't just mate for funsies, why isn't parthenogenesis a more common way of reproducing? Scientifically, since this process is very much like cloning, that means that any mutant or bad genes are also duplicated each time the creature reproduces, which could eventually result in something referred to as Muller's ratchet. Muller's ratchet theorizes that because of the duplicating of disadvantageous genes that thousands of generations into a species' existence, there would be too many harmful mutations and the species would go extinct. According to what I read, the reason why the whiptail lizards I mentioned earlier are able to reproduce seemingly without this issue, despite never reproducing sexually, is because they came into existence by two different species mating, resulting in a richer DNA. So whether or not Charlotte was impregnated by the male sharks in her tank, or if she reproduced via parthenogenesis, she's certainly an interesting scientific marvel, and I learned so much while learning more about her. Thank you so much for joining me on this quick trip down the rabbit hole, and until next time, be safe, be kind, and stay curious. The Welcome to Wonderland podcast is copyrighted by Amy Bland and is part of Big Media. This podcast is recorded in the podcast studio at GOT Sound Studio in Lexington, South Carolina, but this episode was recorded in the Welcome to Wonderland recording closet. Any thoughts or opinions expressed as part of this production are those of the host, unless otherwise indicated. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Please follow, like, and share this podcast. Find us on Facebook at Welcome to Wonderland, the podcast, and on X, the app formerly known as Twitter, at Wonderland underscore pod. Check out behind-the-scenes moments and other videos on TikTok at Wonderland Pod. And finally, check out pictures, additional information, and go further down the rabbit hole on our website at www.wtwlpod.com. To submit corrections, additional information, or requests for episodes, please email the host at Welcome to Wonderland, the pod at gmail.com. Proceeding podcast is a product of Big Media and copyright 2024, all rights reserved.